Good evening, everybody. Evening, sir. Good evening. You know how the sounds are tired? Man, you know you're tired, you know? Everybody sounds so tired, sounds silent like they must say, Lord Jesus. Stress again. All right, so I'm sure you are aware of the fact that next week is the final week of school. So after this lecture, we only have one, which is promotions, which is the final P, and then that's it. That's the course. That's the course. Um, so are there any questions relating to your assignment or anybody has anything that you want to share or any question you want to ask? Go ahead. I hope you, you, you checked the third. Have you seen the third version, the third draft of the timetable? No, sir. It was sent to your email. When, just now? No, man, I sent it years ago. Really, sir? Yeah. Check I sent it. So, sir, so that is the final draft? No, it's the third draft. The so third I draft. The final draft for common. I don't know. I don't determine. I, I usually, I can ask tomorrow because I usually, it is sent to me to disseminate the students. Oh, that one. Yes, that same I, I, email. I had, I had in my brain the final one. No, man, the final one has not been sent yet. I would have shared it in the WhatsApp group. Oh. Yeah. All right, any other question um, relating to your assignment, everything is good at your assignment. Let me go through the list that I'm seeing. No. Tosa Saint, Tosa Saint, what's happening? My contact separate. Um, I spoke with someone, mm -hmm. email her what exactly I need. I email her from Monday. May I try reach back? I know we can get back to her, sir. All right, so have you tried reaching out to them on social media? No. You should remember these are the mark, these are the platforms that they use. You can use only email. Use all of their platforms to get in touch with them. If you so know we can some, call them directly and get to somebody. And then, all right, we got to try that with you still. Yeah, man, you have to try different ways. If you can, if you're near to them and you can drive go there, or somebody can take you there, sometimes that works as well. Okay. All right, Estriana. I don't know if Estriana is in the same um, group. How is everything with your project? Miss Murphy. Sir, sir, I believe in principle, my manager, I guess, is in the is in the 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 the, the meeting, so I'll allow him to speak. Fabian, go ahead, Fabian. Um good night, good night. Good evening, sir. You say good night when you're going to your bed. <laughs> good evening. Yes, sir. <clears throat> sir, so as it related to our assignment, mm -hmm. definitely we, 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 the brand that we identified. Mm -hmm. How far are you in your project? Have you moved from the introduction? Yes. However, going into it, we are, are our group find it um a bit difficult to get information which company is it again i think it was our Cinco. we um i don't the product, think you should the have a product we choose the product that we choose no but remember you know some of the information will not be on the product you know it will be on with Cinco itself so like some of the introductory information let me just uh share before going to no, the lecture not, all right maybe not 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 fully the introduction we, we have the introduction and everything mm -hmm. so which parts are you having a challenge with all right going into going into the going into the product itself right the product itself what is the product and and 
So, all right, well, the product was boom. However, we are look we are look on a product change, you know. Let me make sure I identify that. Okay. So, um, so yeah, you're looking so, at boom. Mm -hmm. Boom is boom is a part of which industry? The beverage energy drink industry. Energy drink. All right. Um, I see something. A small thing about um boom here have you looked at some of the gleaner articles and stuff relating to the product yes um gleaner observer the star but i think most most of them have um could be like uh, uh, uh what's people think about the, the, the product so. okay have you have you tried reaching out um, to anybody at the company itself definitely um i spoken to we're supposed to meet i think this week hopefully have you reached out to any of the um so i'm looking i'm on missing calls so i see that boom is one of their brands um let me see something so let's say information where i try um getting a is it is is for example its position basically as it all right as it's a locally first locally made brand but have you looked at it have you tried to get some information internationally though internationally i am not seeing much information is when you go that's internationally not that's not possible sir i'm not asking i'm telling you that's not possible sir. and both no you you're looking at the energy drink industry all right so so i'm looking for example global energy drinks global energy drinks um i'm seeing a lot of information um, on that global energy drinks market, I'm seeing 28. I'm seeing projections, global energy drinks, and they're showing you market share. Uh, I'm seeing a number of info, pieces of information about global about energy drink globally. Have you got information about what are they? What are the other um what are the other types of energy drinks in jamaica sir maybe i get the perspective at all um, no you can go let, let me tell you you can go global then you go um caribbean then you go local that's usually how you write it you go global first to see where does it fit what's the what is the current condition of the energy drink industry globally not just boom the Energy no, drink just energy drink industry, because that's where you're going to kind of understand. Um, so energy drinking, I'm trying to share. Let me see if I can share a screen. So why can't I find that page? All right. But sir. Yes. If we are to, all right. The example that you gave us. Uh, is it that we're supposed to follow those exact thing that you did? No, you cannot follow, follow exactly what I did. I gave you an example. I never gave you. I um, understand, but anyway. It's just an example. Sure you can't funny, follow it to the T. Sure. All right, so here is global energy drink, right? So if you look here, I'm seeing global energy drink market share was valued at whatever in 2018 and is expected to grow by this percent by 2026. All right, so this is giving you some amount of perspective on global energy drinks coming from allied market research. So it is considered credible. Um, can look at it like that. All right. Uh, all right, let's look at something else. Let me see if I can. Energy drink industry in the Caribbean. All right, Caribbean beverages. Because probably you guys are not doing. So I'm seeing something in Cuba. Accept. 
I'm seeing something in Dominica, Puerto Rico, beer in Dominica Republic, spirits in Dominica, wine, whatever that is, soft drinks in uh, Dominica Republic, energy drinks in Dominica, all right, tea in Dominica, da, da, da. I don't know if there's any Jamaica. So this is, hold on. So that's one. This says market you search. All right, let's click on one of them because sometimes what they do, they, they actually give you some, if it is an actual research. All right. Oh, these are the sites that sell. Oh yeah, they are selling it. All right, so let's look at something else. All right, this is something relating to Jamaica. Okay. All right, this is just our products. Does it give us? Mm. Let me see our products, what comes under their products. Oh, this looks like it's an international one. All right, let's go back. Uh, let's scroll down and see. Okay, what's this? You see, you probably, are, you're typing in. All right, so this is on Sun Island. So it's, so this is what in the teeth and, and put it on this introduction. So easy to find it. All right, so. So everywhere you go, same thing, you see. You're supposed to put it in your own word, madam. All right. All right, let's see this paper. All right, so here's a research paper. Now, if you could get this paper. Um, all right, let me try another. All right, let me see what comes up here. You have to kind of know, you have to search all over people. All right, so energy drink industry. Let's see what comes up in academia.edu. No, I don't want to upload Jesus. Dominating the energy drink industry. All right, individual assignment, competitive analysis. Wow, this looks like part of an assignment. Let's see what, well, it's probably not about Jamaica or the Caribbean, but. Local competitors. So Red Bull is Red Bull is in Jamaica. So this can competitive analysis. So market share. So this is exactly something like how your competitive analysis should look. If you can get this is another part. Here's the positioning map that I told you about. Hello. So easy to find positioning map, which is supposed to be included in, in that part of your assignment. This comes under the competitive analysis. This is the part that you might not get in terms of the market share, but what you can do is to, is to look at Wisinko's market share. And if you can't find red bullets, um, if you can't find boom, if you can't find boom, you might need to switch to red bull, but hold on, because this is actually very good. Because I actually didn't type in Caribbean, I just type in, that's five, Korea. What is this individual assignment? Let's see what comes up here. Globe soft drink, is this soft drink? All right, this is just speaking about, oh, this is an actual research that was done. Production capacity, energy drinks, brands. Isn't Spice advertising Red Boom? Isn't she one of the brand ambassadors for Boom? No, not Spice, Shensia. It's Shensia, right? 
Yeah. All right, hold on. Let's look again. All right, let me type something else in the Caribbean. Let's see what comes up. All right, so you see a paper here about it in the Caribbean promotion as use plus da da da. Handbook of Innovation, da da da. All right, let's look at this paper. Hopefully, we can get into it. This was written when? 20. It might not speak to Red Bull. Um, boom, because this is this was done in the St. August at the St. Augustine campus. All right, let's go back. Handbook. Caribbean music. Red Bull dominating. All right, so let's look at Red Bull because probably that's what you need to look at because Red Bull does operate in the Caribbean. All right. All right, so let's go back and see if there's anything. Did you guys reach out to the company? Hello? Then did answer that question, yes. No, not the company itself, but as I said, I reach out to someone that works. Yeah. And what the person says. So basically, I'm going to share the meeting. Okay. All right. Uh, usually, this space is very. All right, let's go again. <clears throat> Sir, the one, the next one I'm look for still, hopefully, is the, the um, coffee industry still. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Blue Mountain. Coffee Group. Well, this was just a picture. The article wasn't written. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, hell no. This is not what I'm looking for. Not boom, boom. I want boom. Energy drink call for us. Here's a brand manager. I need to reach the brand manager. But they're only taking photos. Hold on. Let me do one last try. Oh. Mm -hmm. If you could get this freaking paper, here it is. Because here they are giving you, even though, but usually they have to do what we call a literature review. And the literature review would give you what these are. I'm not joining any goddamn thing. They don't give you the paper for free. They want you to. Let me see what they give me right here. So they never ever give you the paper for free. This was actually done in 2013. All right, you'll probably have to go change the product because I'm uh, I'm not seeing a lot of research on it. But I I would I would probably do 
um, the other one. What, what did I say again? The other energy drink. Red Bull. Red Bull. You might get, well, you're going to get a lot of information on Red Bull. But anyhow, yeah, you so determine. Academia. Academia, that's ED. No, man, you can use Facebook or it's just to create a, 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 a um, you know, I never check Google Scholar too. Let me try Google Scholar. Don't, because boom is kind of new. So let me see energy, energy drink, market. In the Caribbean. Uh, Nestle Caribbean beverage case studies. And then, sir, mm -hmm. Mr. Buka, you name Mr. Perfect. We have to try to get all of the information to make it be over perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but anyhow. Sir, that's the position you put us in. Well, I'm happy that you are actually consciously thinking about what you're going to produce. That's actually good. All right. Um, so let me get to the lecture. But as I said, I just wanted to find out where you guys are. And it does happen that you might start looking at one thing and you realize that the information is not readily available and you have to switch to something else. And you find that even when the research is done in the Caribbean or in Jamaica, especially, it is not so easily accessible because everybody is selling the research. They're really selling the research. All right, so today we look, we're going to look at uh, marketing channels. And the learning objectives are to explain what channels are and why marketers need channel partners, to describe the major types of channel partners, to describe the process of organizing and managing channels and explain how channel conflict can occur, to explain the strategy behind intensive, selective, and exclusive distribution, to describe the major channel design decisions marketers must make and explain the role of supply chain management and logistics management and why companies often choose third parties to handle these tasks. So those are some of the discussions we'll be having today. And the, they are very, very important. If I can, I had made some jotting somewhere relating to this thing. Let me just find my notes. It's okay, I'll find it eventually. All right, so remember now, the marketing mix has four Ps. We looked at product already. We looked at goods, services, and packaging and all of that. We looked at the second P. I think that was last. You could look at price relating to strategies and all of that. And now we're at the third P, which is place. And when we talk about place, we're talking about channel, distribution, inventory. We're talking about logistics. So marketing channels, and I, what I did, why did I do that? What I did, I, to some extent, made some notes so that it can assist you to understand. So I might not go full, full screen um, all the time. And I need to make my, let me just find what I, because I came up with a little scenario that will help you to understand. I'm just trying to find my notes. Yes, here it is. Right. Okay, so let me ask you this. If you want to get Devano's ice, Devano's ice cream, where can you get it? Where can you get, where, where can you purchase Devano's ice cream? It's not a rhetorical question. Devano's, I mean, no, I mean, I... All right, so Devonos is 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 is, is only at Devonos you can get Devonos ice cream. Are there any other places you can get Devonos ice cream? Um, other small retailers of ice cream. So we can get them from um, 
retailers of ice cream. Can we get it anywhere else? So retailers, so we have different types of retailers, right? So we have the small shop in the, the community shop. Where else can we get it? Sorry, supermarket. You can get it at the supermarket, yes. Anywhere else? Supermarket, anywhere else can we get um, Devano's ice cream? Uh, yeah, different from them of different, different locations, still like mall, them the Panama. Right. So, yes. Yeah. Yes. The mall. Mall, plazas, <laughs> convenience store. So they're all over. In other words, these are part of what are called the channels or the places where we can get Devano's ice cream. And it is important. Um, what we want to understand in relation to marketing channels is that where the ice creams are accessible is not by chance. It's a part of the marketing mix. It's a part of the strategy where, you, where your product is available to customers or to consumers. What about if we want to buy grace products where can we get grace products supermarket or sale corner shop no place mm -hmm. even even coronation market or even that kind of market mall old, as you said wholesale all over you can get the products so products come through a supply chain and the supply chain is made up of upstream producers and downstream marketing channel partners. And the upstream producers are the ones who supply the raw materials and components necessary to create the products. In other words, they are really the manufacturers. And then the downstream persons now are the ones who link what the manufacturers have created to the customers and you're going to see where it's important for the manufacturers not to necessarily sell the product directly to a customer can anybody tell me why it would be unwise for a manufacturer to sell products directly to customers let us say grace So what was the question? I'm saying, why is it on? Remember, we're talking about, um, so, let's say, players in the supply chain. We talk about upstream producers and downstream uh, marketing channel partners. And I'm saying, why is it unwise for, them, for manufacturers to sell their products directly to customers? Um, I would say them, they probably don't make enough profit at the same time as they would make the, the same profit with selling it to a supermarket. For instance, because, um, you know, some people, uh, some customers won't buy a certain amount at a given time. Mm -hmm. They probably buy a three or a four, more as the supplier or distributor going to stock up. They are going right. to um, pick more products. In other words, they're going to buy in larger quantities. Yes. Right. Perfect answer. So instead of really using the term supply chain, um, marketers prefer the term value delivery network made up of producers, suppliers, distributors, and cons customers or consumers who improve the performance of the entire system in delivering customer value. You're seeing my screen, right, guys? And the words are clear. So in terms of the marketing channel, 
it says few producers sell their goods directly to the final users of their products. Instead, most use intermediaries to bring their products to market. And that is very, very important that you use intermediaries. And as was rightly said earlier, if you're selling directly to customers, customers are going to buy like three mackerel. Customers are not going to buy a um, hundred cases of mackerel or a hundred cases of chicken. They don't really buy like that. They buy like three. Somebody's going to come and buy one toothpaste. And think about you having a, a, a plant and having various individuals coming to your plant, making an order. It's going to be very confusing. And you, you, as as the, as the manufacturer, you're busy what producing. So you don't want to be producing and at the same time dealing with customers in that particular way. Those kinds of customers, individual customers, who will buy in smaller quantity. All right, and it could be that the location where you manufacture the goods are not where the customers live, especially in a globalized world. You know, markets are manufacturers um, are all over the place. Sometimes they are manufactured in China and shipped to another country. Um, so that again would not make it a very wise thing to do. And here is a perfect example of why a distributor is important. Because when you look at this, for example, and I think I made some notes, as I said to, um, so this figure shows how using intermediaries can, prov can provide economies. In A, which is this, the manufacturer not only has to produce the product, but has also to market it to the various customers. This is extremely difficult. However, in B, an intermediary is also is able to reduce the work of the manufacturer by making the product available to the most profitable segments in the marketplace. Intermediaries also assort the items for customers, making them easily accessible and even cheaper for them. Make sense? So the distributor know, because remember, the manufacturers, they're producing a lot of stuff all at once. The distributors know, when it, the distributor take it, for example, to the supermarket and they're going to put them, what? They're going, there's going to be some sort of assortment. So you know where to find the bread, you know where to find the tissue, you know where to find this, you know where the fridge is, where if you want meat. So it is organized a particular way. The manufacturer would not have the time for that as opposed to a distributor. So we see why distributors are very, very important. And it therefore means that if distributors are very important, it means that the partnership between them and companies and marketers are also important. How channel man uh, members add value? Um, financing and let's just bring this up because the notes are here. Lord. Don't fall. So, in general, channel members add value by bridging the major time, place, and position gaps that separate goods and services from those who would use them. There, these are some of the specific functions. So information gathering and distribution. Channel partners have access to information the manufacturer might not have. So like um, consumption patterns of customers, um, spending behavior, they, do, they would not have, um, for example, um, the time for coupons and things like that. Promotion at point of, um, point of purchase. So national brand advertising is typically handled by the manufacturer, but promotions at point of purchase, such as locally advertised sales, are handled by distributors and retailers. So, you know, the 25% of discount or whatever, um, you, those things are usually done by a, a, a distributor or a retailer. Contact. Channel members, such as sales agents operating in the field and in local markets, can find new customers. Manufacturers don't have the time for that. Negotiation channel partners such as brokers and agents negotiate, negotiate price and terms of delivery so that the product can move from one channel member to another. And many of us who have bought, who have, who have, um, who have done some amount of buying on Amazon can understand this um, particular thing. Physical distribution, trucking and other transportation companies act as channel members by transporting and storing products as they move through the channel. And you know that trucking is very, very important in terms of moving one thing like oil or diesel, um, let us say it's cars, whatever it is, whether it be by land or by sea or by air, these particular um, Physical distributors are important. Financing too is important um, because some of the consumers cannot buy the product in one, let us call it in one bite. So they need, again, you need intermediaries like a bank. 
And, and this is where like risk taking comes into play because if you're going to buy a car that is $6 million, many of the persons who you see buying cars in Jamaica, they don't own them. The cars are owned by the, who owned the car? May I listen? Who owns the car, people? Nobody now talk to me. Bank? Person to loan from? Right. So most of the most of the cars are owned by the banks. All right. And risk taking now, depending on partner, on the partner arrangement, channel members may assume the risk of handling, transporting, and storing the product as it moves through the channel, especially products that are flam in, um, flammable products that are, for example, chemicals and stuff like that. Um, the, the intermediaries are willing to take the risk because they have the expertise in terms of how to store and transport these particular things. And after sales support, remember too that some things that you buy, you need after sales support um, to help you to know how to use the thing. All right, so these are some of the ways of how channel members add value. And as I said before, I, 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 I want for you to see some of the, the notes because I deliberately kind of type in some of the notes so that it's not just looking at the slide, but kind of um, discussing some of the issues. All right, so types, types of intermediaries, and we did talk about um, wholesalers, um, agents, and retailers. So retailing, and it would be interesting if any of you do a master's in marketing and, and, and sales or, or, or retail management. It's a very interesting area of, of study. All activities in selling. So retailing means all activities involved in selling products or services directly to final consumers for their personal non-business use. And we know, we know this retail stores are there galore in Jamaica and all over the world. All right. Um, and it plays a very important um, role in the marketing channel and there are different types of retailers. And they can also be classified by the, the, the prices that they charge. And I'm not going to go into all of these details. I'm going to move now to, all, to um, wholesaling. Some of these things are going to read on your own. I don't have the time to, to read all of this thing. You need to do some amount of independent reading. Hopefully it's... Uh, um, so wholesaling all activities involving selling goods and services to those buying for resale or for business use. That's typically what wholesaling means, but that's not necessarily the case in Jamaica to some extent. So many shops like community shops buy from wholesales to, re to, to resell, right? So wholesalers add value for producers by performing one or more channel functions. Merchant wholesaler, an independent wholesaler business that takes title to the merchandise it handles, Largest group of wholesalers accounting for 50% of all wholesaling. Two broad categories, full service wholesalers, limited service wholesalers. And of course, they have particular functions, um, market information, and they have a lot of information about the market in terms of inventory management and the types of goods and services that are on. Um, that are on. They understand the whole de de the demand and supply. Um, we are housing because they have to store the the items and they do absorb a lot of risks um you also have outside of retailers and wholesalers you also have what are called brokers and brokers and agents and they usually perform very limited role by really just connecting the the the, the, the product to the customer all right they don't do the branding and all that they tend not to do that and if you think about brokers um, by Kingston Wharf, they really don't have those kinds of particular rules in terms of being um, for sales promotion and absorbing cost and risk and all of that. They don't do that. All right. If you buy a car, um, all they're going to do is sign off on the paper to say, yes, this is OK. If there are any damage to the car, unless you can prove it that it was caused by they caused by them or Kingston Wharf, you have to go back to the actual manufacturer. All right. Uh, and that's um, how, for example, these types of intermediaries add value to the marketing channel. Why is my slide over here not changing? Organization and management of channel. Are we understanding people? Because I kind of talking, talking, talking. I wonder if you're understanding. Yes, sir. Okay. These people are texting me. Okay. All right. Um, so channel levels. 
So you have what are called the number of intermediate indicates direct marketing channels and the indirect marketing channels. And I think I have some notes there as well. Right. So the number of levels of the channel are the number of channel members that function as intermediaries between the producer and the consumer constitutes the length of a channel. The shortest possible channel is a channel with no intermediaries. This is referred to as direct marketing channel where the producer of the goods sells directly to the final customer. And there are times when that happens. You have, for example, some supermarkets, even though they are quote unquote retailers, they also are, um, they also connect, they also produce goods. So I'm sure you have gone to, to, to supermarkets and you see the, the name of the supermarket on products in the supermarket. Anybody has ever been to a supermarket where you actually see like, let's just say it's Lee's supermarket and you see Lee's water. They're selling water or something like that. Ilo yes. Ilo sugar. Right, right. So Ilo would do that. So that is an example of direct marketing channel because the product is coming directly from the producer to the consumer. Um, most channels, however, have one or more intermediaries and are there for indirect marketing channels. And you find, for example, that the same supermarket can be used because they, for example, might they buy they might buy from the producer or the manufacturer. Sometimes they don't buy directly from the manufacturer. They buy from someone who buys from the manufacturer. And it could be a case to where the supermarket rents a space to a pharmacist. So the customer is getting, so the, so the, so the customer is getting something that was really created by the supermarket um, enabled by the pharmacy. All right. So, and it's very true that many channels, most channels have one or more intermediaries usually. Um, so the, 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 the supermarket becomes the intermediary between you and the manufacturer, the sales agent becomes the intermediary between you and the life insurance, things like that. Those are some of the examples. All right, so direct and indirect marketing channel, and they're just kind of showing you some examples. Um, so producer, at the top level, you have producers, and at the bottom level, you have what are called consumers. And there are two categories of consumers. These are the non let's call them non-business consumers, and then you have business consumers. And there are instances where, I, and I just spoke about it, where the producer sells directly to the consumer and where the consumer, where the, the producer um, sells directly to a retailer and the retailer sells to a, a consumer, or where the producer sells to a wholesaler and the wholesaler sells to a retailer and the retailer sells to the consumer. And the retailer could be a corner shop. So the manufacturer sells to the wholesale, the person goes, goes somewhere downtown and buy the, 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 the chicken or the mackerel from the wholesaler and then sells it um, to customers in his or her community. And this is business to business where the producer might sell directly to a business customer. Um, for example, there are times when some pharmaceuticals sell directly to hospitals, um, sell the products directly to the hospital. Um, there are instances when that is not the actual case where the producer might sell to a business distributor. Um, for example, you might have a producer that makes certain, let's say tools or equipment that are used in a hospital, sell to a business distributor and the business distributor now sells it to clinics and hospitals and, and, and all over, all right? And the same goes here. So these are different examples. These are just examples showing you the marketing channels in terms of how it plays out or how they play out in actuality. All right, so vertical marketing systems. Um, I think I have a, a recording here for you to listen to. Hold on. Just give me one second. Let me find my. All right. Uh, so today I'd like to discuss a program that topic. Uh, hold on. So 
Lord. Give me one sec. That's not the video. Why? Okay, I saw something here. Lord Jesus. All right, I'm not finding the, I actually found it today. I didn't save it, but it's okay. Let me proceed without it. Stop sharing. I think I made some notes. Oh, hold on. I think I did something wrong. That's why I wasn't finding it. Right. That's why I... All right, so I'm going to share a screen now. I was just trying to find the right. All right, hold on, let me share and go back for screen. Vertical mark marketing. Which direction is vertical again? Can you remind me which direction is vertical? North to south, right? All right, so as marketers, our product is the main source of value for our customer but we have to deliver that product to the customer for them to capture that value. So the way we deliver product to customers is through what's called our channel system. And there are a lot of different ways that companies design their channel systems, all with the goal of delivering product to the customer. One option is what's called a vertical marketing system. And this almost is just a way to describe a channel system, but it is a way of designing the channel system such that all the members involved share a focus on serving the same target market of consumers. This seems to me to just make sense. If everybody involved, whether it's the producer, wholesaler, retailer, or just producer, retailer to customer, however it's shaped and built, if everybody involved is trying to focus on the same uh, target market or customer, it seems like this will create more value for the customer, as well as allowing us to specialize in what we do. Another benefit is this should limit the conflict within the channel system. In other words, channel conflict, because if we're all working together towards serving the same customer, we can be on the same page and work you know, cooperatively instead of competitively. Ultimately, this should increase customer satisfaction because their needs are driving everything that we do within our channel system. So these are the benefits of a vertical marketing system. All right, so talk to me about the vertical marketing system. What's your understanding? Hello, we are silent. Is it that we don't understand? All right, somebody's about to speak. Go ahead. Um, we're more than one um, marketing channel. You, um, use one specific product or product to try and satisfy the needs of customers to find that they are distributing the same products. So there is um there is you know how it has looked. so it increases customer satisfaction. So then the shot of that product or those products and you start because you have more than one marketing channel for that specific product. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the- so It's a tier, so it always depends on the market. You can always get it. All right, hold on. All 
All right. Yeah. So let's listen again. I don't think he did justice today. Hello and welcome to Mark. Uh, yeah, I never said I wanted to be finished. I want to. Hello and welcome to marketing91.com. In this video, we are going to cover the topic on channel integration and systems. Let's start with the introduction. An independent producer, wholesaler and retailer together form a standard marketing channel. Although as a whole system, they might gain lesser profit, but the parts of the marketing channels are individual businesses that look to magnify their profits. Members of this channel do not have any significant control over the other members. Going forward, let's look at the type of channel integration and system. Starting with the first one, Vertical Marketing Systems. One or more producers, wholesalers and retailers together act as a consolidated system in a vertical marketing system. A channel captain, that is a channel steward, is the most powerful member of the channel. It gets the others to cooperate and own or franchises them. The steward uses its partner's best interest as a tool to get them to coordinate instead of commanding them or issuing directives. A channel steward can be from any part of the system. It can be a wholesaler, retailer or a producer. Let's look at some examples of vertical marketing system. The first one being the Domino's franchise model. As of December 2019, Domino's had about 17,000 stores in approximately 90 markets. On the basis of global retail sales, it is the largest pizza company in the world. Domino's operates through the franchising model. 98% of the world's Domino's stores are owned by individual franchisees. In the US store segment, Domino's has about 5,500 franchise stores and 342 company-owned stores. In the international franchise segment, there is a network of stores in around 90 markets. Franchisees in the top 10 international market accounted for around 63% of their stores till date. Moving forward, this table reflects the store count for Domino's in its... Alright, do we understand the, the vertical... Um, do we understand this particular example that is being used? Hello? There are more and more no, sir. It's say that again. The first one more might be clearer than this one. Really? <laughs> this actually Hello. is very easy. The example is very easy. So the, us, the, 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 the example, no, the, the thing is what I why I chose why I switched the example is because I it did not give you enough. There wasn't any specific example, there was just a definition. All right, because the only thing that was mentioned before is that for the vertical uh, marketing channel is the fact that there are um, producers, wholesalers and retailers who are working together in a consolidated system. However, what this is actually pointing out is that the channel, that the, the system itself, the marketing channel itself has someone or something or a body or a company or an entity in charge of the entire system. And this is the whole notion of franchising. Remember that most fast food restaurants, you know, what they do is what franchise. We understand the concept of franchising. What do we mean by franchising? Do you understand the concept of franchising? Yeah, I think so. All right, tell me what you understand from the term franchising. Any, um, start, uh, start. When you or when a company, I don't understand when, when they say. When a company, sorry, let me, let me, when a company starts its business in a new location, or uh, could be locally or international. So, but is it, is it, is it that it is starting the business in a new location, or is it that it gives, it forms a contract? Well, um, and uh, a contract. Right. So what happens is that in franchising, um, the owner of the, the brand or the product gives a license to a person or an entity to operate a business, its business in a particular location. And what... Um, so let me use the term, the legal term now, franchiser and franchisee. So the franchisee gets a license from the franchiser to sell for quote unquote McDonald's in Jamaica. 
right? And what McDonald's, the franchisor gets, who is the owner of the, the brand, they get royalties. You have to pay fees. And usually in the, in the contract, there is uh, an agreement in terms of the amount to be paid. So what this Correct. is saying, so yes. I ask, I ask you a question, the franchisors, right? It's like mm -hmm. you have the same, the different branch all over, different international. Right, industries. exactly, exactly, oh, exactly. Okay. And, and that's why I know, I was saying that this is actually easier to understand because what the person is saying is vertical marketing systems, a channel captain, who would be what? The franchisor is the most powerful member of the channel because that person, what, is the person that what license the brand to someone else. So it gets others to cooperate and owns or franchises them. Others to cooperate and own or franchise. And then it says the steward uses its partner's best interest as a tool to get them to coordinate instead of commanding them or issuing directives. In other words, the franchisee will have access to all of Burger King's operation model or business model. So this is why it says everybody now is working towards the same objective. And this was the example now being given of franchise Dominos. model. As of December 2019, Domino's had about 17,000 stores in approximately 90 markets. On the basis of global retail sales, it is the largest pizza company in the world. Domino's operates through the franchising model. 98% of the world's Domino's stores are owned by individual franchise. All right, individual franchisee. Remember now, this particular um this particular model the vertical marketing um system now is made up of what wholesalers producers and retailers all right and they're using them in kind of um particular terms so let's say that dominoes is quote unquote the producer and the other persons know let's say the, fran the individual franchisees, they are what? Would they be wholesalers or retailers? Ret no, retailers, huh? Right, so they are retailers. Franchisees. In the US store segment, Domino's has about 5,500 franchise stores and 342 company-owned stores. In the international franchise segment, there's a network of stores in around 90 markets. Franchisees in the top 10 international market accounted for around 63% of their stores till date. Moving forward, this table reflects the store count for Domino's in its markets outside US. India being the leading market with about 1300 stores, above United Kingdom with around 1100 stores, Mexico around 800 stores, all the way to Germany which has about 325 stores. Moving forward to a next example of Coca-Cola's India operations. After the economic liberalization of 1991 in India, the Coca-Cola company entered the Indian market in 1992 as Coca-Cola India Private Limited as its fully owned subsidiary. Given below are the entities that comprise the Coca-Cola system in India. Coca-Cola India Private Limited is entirely owned by the Coca-Cola company that makes and sells concentrates, beverages, bases and powdered beverage mixes. There are 13 companies that are licensed bottling partners of the Coca-Cola company. These licenses licensing no is a form of franchising. It's just that it's a little bit different. It's a it's a form of license of franchising, but it's a little bit different. And I'm sure it's going to explain. Bottling partners are allowed to make, pack, sell, and distribute beverages under the specified trademarks of the Coca-Cola company. In other words, they are given permission to use the trademark. So as it says, these licensed bottling partners are allowed to make, pack, sell, and distribute beverages under the specified trademarks of the TTC. What this means as well is that the licensor, no, this is the licensee, cannot in any way dilute the, what is called the quality, con no, well, it's not the quality control, the actual, what's the term I told you the other day, the trade secret of how Coca-Cola is made. So there's, a, there's some amount of quality control involved. They cannot dilute they cannot change any of the, 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 how it tastes or the look or the feel or whatever. They can't do any of that because they just, has a, they just have a license to sell um, Coca-Cola. So One of them is the Hindu. You think? Uh, 
Um, based on everything research and the day, mm-hmm. West Inco has a license out here, so for the retail um, Coca Cola. Okay, and it, therefore means that you could look at Coca Cola or you could look at um, Red Bull because somebody has a license to distribute Red Bull in Jamaica. Same or same. It's, it's probably with Cinco. Okay, okay. Then you can look at why it changed from energy drinks since you have some information. Look at Red Bull. And just look at it through this model of, of licensing. Hindustan Coca-Cola Beverages Private Limited. Moving further, the example of Apple. Along with direct distribution channel, Apple also employs a range of indirect distribution channels. Some examples of indirect distribution channels are wholesalers, retailers, and cellular network carriers. 31% of the company's net sales were accounted through direct channels and 69% were through the indirect distribution channel in December 2019. Moving further, let's look at the types of the vertical marketing system. There are three types, corporate, administered and contractual. Let's look at corporate. It is a combination of the stages of the production and distribution under one ownership. Example, Nike owned stores and digital stores. Next. Administered vertical marketing. All right, you don't need to know all of that, though. That's not a part of the of the um, syllabus. You don't need to go. That's it's when you um, go up the quote unquote food chain, because it's actually in the lecture that you get into the gory details of that. But usually at this level, you don't get into all that kind of discussion. Then you have the horizontal um, marketing systems. Um, let's just listen a little to the horizontal marketing systems and I'm really kind of using the videos to kind of kill time because I don't want time to run out on us. And we have the other module to finish. Plus, I have to give you some time to for feedback for your papers. Anybody think that based on the, the interaction so far, you'd actually want to become a, you'd actually want to explore marketing? No, sir. <laughs> that was very frank <laughs> why not stress how is it stressing you have never have you ever done it you have never done it so it's not stressing no sir, i don't want to <laughs> well at least you're honest it's not that bad it's not that bad it's uh it's uh, it takes a lot of creativity um to do it and a lot it's, of research yes uh, but well, I think anything you're going to do now is going to be just as stressing. I think anything you do now, it will be just as stressing. Um, let me see if I can find Sorry, Mark, You have to have a, a, um, a liking for it or a passion for it to do. Go away, especially for marketing. Because I know person, I, I know one and two person do it. Uh-huh. And then you have, to have a knock from, you have to have a knock for it. Well, true. Yeah, it takes a lot of creativity because right now yeah, I'm in lot, talks a, with... A lot of work, yeah. I'm actually in talks with KLAS because they were very impressed with my coverage of the Olympics for being their social media coordinator. So we're in negotiations now in terms of a kind of retainer. And I know it's going to be a lot of work because I'm not a sports person, you know, following all kinds of sporting activities and all that. No, I have to, if they um, agree to the payment because, you know, money is important. Very, very important. Um, And as you said, marketing is a lot of work. People think marketing means creating a flyer. And that's the problem. Some persons they just think they can just get up and be a marketer, not understanding. There's a lot of there's a science behind marketing, a whole heap of science, especially when you look at pricing. How do you determine pricing? Which pricing strategy that you're going to use, and how do you justify that to your um, your your boss? The kinds of distribution channels, the kinds of partners you choose. Let's just say it's a new product. Let's just say the product is not doing very well in the marketplace. How do you um, you know what do you do? Um, to maintain market share, to increase market share, or to retain loyal customers is a whole heap of stuff. Um, and I, I have, I'm of the opinion that anybody who does marketing should do sales as well, because it's a, it's a perfect marriage for you to, it's like the other side of the coin. It's a lot of work, I can tell you. And digital marketing enough itself is a lot of work. So and plus doing traditional marketing is a whole heap of work. Um, but it's fun. And as you say, you have to have a natural knock for it. All right, so let's listen to the horizontal marketing system marketing system. An emerging market is exploited through programs and resources that are put together by more than one unrelated company as a joint effort. This is called a horizontal marketing system. The companies that are involved in the system individually either lack capital, knowledge, production, marketing resources to exploit alone or are too afraid of the risk to venture alone. 
these companies join hands either temporarily or permanently for example many supermarket chains offer in store banking due to their tie up with banks looking at some examples of horizontal marketing system the first one being starbucks partnership with spotify the potential of the combination of food and beverage marketers loyalty program with the music streaming services is demonstrated with starbucks partnership with spotify starbucks mobile loyalty program is integrated with spotify's music streaming with the my starbucks rewards around 17 million customers in the us can curate playlists for starbucks stores this enables the customers to not only create their own in-store playlists for starbucks stores but also listen to them when they have left the premises This encourages loyalty, customer generation, customer comfort and active participation between customers. And moving on to the final example of Shopstop's partnership with Citibank. Citibank and Shopstop have an integrated partnership deal since 2002. This partnership helps with increasing number of customers at Shopstop through Citibank's credit card offers. For example, first citizen Citibank credit card can be used by customers to redeem their first citizen reward point against their purchases made. For example, Rupees sixty monetary purchase value equals to hundred points credited on their credit card. So that's it, folks. This brings in. Can you think of any local example of the ver- vertical marketing system? Vertical or horizontal? Horizontal. Sorry, I'm tired. Horizontal. My my bad. Thanks. Can we think of any local example? There are so many of them. It's Paymaster, be one, sir. Explain how is Paymaster one of them? For instance, you have a credit union, and even the um, even Western Union, we do with money. Mm-hmm. And then you have the bill section where you pay bill and support. Yeah, the and Western I, Union where you send money, receiving money, mm-hmm. and exchanging um foreign currency, and then the other section you have bill bill payment section where you mm-hmm. pay a bill. Yes, that's an example. Yes. Any other example? What about car like the the auto companies and the banks? Oh, like um, when I use a credit card at the bank, or uh, from the bank receipt credit card, they give you um some loyalty points also. No, no, but I, but not only that. When you're going to buy a car, most of the cars are going to tell you what they will offer. One hundred. They're going to say, oh, one hundred um financing available through various banks. So there's a partnership between the auto companies and the banks. I'm sure uh, many of you probably own a car or bought a car, and you know you go. Many of us we go through the bank. We don't buy cars cash, so you go through the bank. So there's this partnership between the two, um, these two distribution channels. Um, so you get the, the you get the so the 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 auto company gets the sale of a car, and the bank gets. To collect interest on your payments, probably too much money, or even some of the banks know that that um, they have to some extent partnered with NHT to sell houses. So if NHT is giving you a hard time, which I'm experiencing now, you go to the bank and allow and make the bank harass NHT for the remaining portion of the funds. All right, so that one was um, pretty much easy to understand. I'm not going to go through all of that. They have some examples. Oh yes, and this is a this is a good example too. Yeah, that is very popular in Jamaica too, uh, and especially overseas. Very very popular. Um, come on, work. Are you seeing my screen? So many ESO gas stations now include an underrun convenience store and a Tim Hortons, creating a horizontal marketing system. Underrun stores are owned by Alimentation, Coach Tard, and are themselves franchises. And we see this a lot at the gas stations. Many of the gas stations that we see, we see that there are different um, outlets that are there. For example, the one um, 
below the stoplight when you're going on half a tree road is that half a tree road they have an AT machine is there the, con the convenience store is there the gas station is there and there's a tire shop there so there are several things available um channel conflict all right let's take a break 10 minutes and come back all right okay everybody do not disappear do not disappear. Um, anybody else wants to use, let us, Tiandra, are you working on your project? Working on your project? Is Tiandra there? Where's the rest of the class? Is it that you, where is the rest of the class? The class is a little bit scanty tonight. Sorry, some people have um, internet down, light is out. Oh, yeah, that... yes, 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 yes. I forgot that yesterday was yeah. the, I keep forgetting about that rain thing. Oh, yes. I thought JPS said that they would have restored all the, they haven't. All right, let's take a few, a few minutes, a few minutes break. Let me get my voice, because I've been talking.
All right, uh, let's continue. And I am... Um, Okay, all right. Uh, so we looked at the, the horizontal and I did say we're going to look at the conflict, um, channel conflict. And the perfect example of, so it says disagreement among marketing channel members over goals, roles and rewards. Um, you might find instances where there's a disagreement in terms of how to distribute and where to distribute um, there's a disagreement between the producer or the re or the manufacturer, the producer and the retailer. There's sometimes there's so, that amount of conflict. So I'm just going to read what this says. Um, each channel member plays an important role in the marketing channel, but sometimes disagreements over roles, goals, and rewards among channel members can create what is known as channel conflict. Take the distribution and marketing of cell phones, for example. A mobile phone ma manufacturer like Samsung wants its product distributed as widely as possible so as to end up in the hands of as many consumers as possible. However, its distributors, telecommunication companies such as Rogers, Bell, and Telos see things a little differently. They want to distribute as many devices as possible to their customers, but they don't favor one manufacturer over another which can lead to channel conflict among those manufacturers. And then they get into horizontal conflicts um, among firms that perform the same function at the same level, level of the channel. For example, it can be when a Toyota dealer in Burnaby feels that Toyota dealer in Vancouver is stealing business by pricing too low or advising outside its assigned territories. Um, and this actually, uh, there's kind of, well, I don't want to use Excel as an example, but we find where the triple CJ, the committee of Com the council of community colleges, there's a kind of gentleman's agreement where you don't advertise in your, um, and another schools or another college's territory. So we're not supposed to advertise in Portmore, for example, because there's Portmore community college. And, um, for the vertical, no, they might have conflict between, for example, remember the vertical, there are different levels. And usually the, the, let's say the franchisor or the licensor has a problem in terms of how the franchisee or the licensee um, does its distribution. And the other thing now, and the perfect example of this is Netflix, where you might find instances where the channel intermediaries sometimes are displaced or cut out of that process. All right, and the example is Netflix. So cutting out of channel intermediaries by product or service producers or the displacement of traditional resellers by radical new types of intermediaries. In other words, um, Netflix no longer needs to, does not need a third party to for, com for its companies, for its customers to access its products. Originally people had to go physically to the store and rent their DVDs, um, but that's no longer the case because it is no they are now using quote-unquote live well let's say internet-based streaming and i think i actually made a note on that point let me just find my point so they are kind of sat down and made some notes uh yeah that's exactly what i said Distribution channels um, strategy. There should be some notes here. All right, so at first glance, it may seem as if all marketers would wish to distribute their products in as many locations as is possible. Intensive distribution, but that's not always the best strategy. Sometimes it's better to choose selective or even exclusive distribution, which means that your product, so intensive is where your product is all over the place. And of course, um, sometimes that can work, sometimes it doesn't work. Um, I, I give an example of a very good friend of mine years ago before he migrated to Canada, opened, uh, he's a medical doctor and he opened an office in St. Thomas and within a year he closed it down because the persons there were just too poor to access his care and it was a very poor location to offer his services, very, very poor location because the people there do not have the spending power. Um, to, to 
access his services. Um, let us say that you are selling cars. Let us say that you are selling, let's not use cars. Let us say that you're selling, um, where do you find, all right, let me ask you this. Let me change, let me ask it the other way. What type of distribution strategy do you think, for example, Devonos ice cream uses? Intensive, selective, or exclusive? Exclusive means that you get it in specific locations or you actually have to order it. What would you say is a distribution strategy for Devonos ice cream? They would be selective. They would be selective. Um, Why do you say selective? Um, locations where they know people would be of great numbers. So, so one, they're looking at the numbers, but not only the numbers, what else are they looking at? They know Devon outside scale, the price. They're looking at spending power. Oh. They have to look at the spending power of the of the customers that they're going after. Um, it makes no sense you're going to put Devonos ice cream in certain areas, for example, certain inner city areas, because they are not going to make a purchase. I just explained um, exclusive. Um, no, Devonos would not be exclusive. Can you think of any exclusive items sold in Jamaica or something that is very exclusive? I can think of one. Very provocative, but I can think of one where certain ex items are sold in exclusive locations. Can anybody think of one? Uh, probably. Say that again, probably. Collectively. And I, I didn't hear you. Collectibles or lease? Collectibles or lease are not, they're not exclusive. You can, anybody can, anybody can drive into collectibles or lease. So, you know, if nobody, you are, you know, you know, everybody we can get collectibles and just pick up something without. Um, but that's not, that's not what makes it, that's not what makes it exclusive though. Um, that's not what makes it exclusive. Collectibles and leads would be more selective. Sir, we want a place name, Chilitos. A place name? Chilitos. What they sell? Uh, Mexican food, straight Mexican. All right, that probably is a little bit exclusive. But any place that sells, for example, sex toys would be exclusive. No, no, them one there, sir. Well, they do exist, all right? <laughs> we have to live in the real world. And also, you have to think about exclusive in the sense that there are some manufacturers that only give a specific distributor the product to, to sell or to wholesale or to retail. They give an exclusive distributor to wholesale or retail. Sir, you would say like, um, firearm. Like? Firearm. Person, right. So any, well, do we have companies that sell firearm in Jamaica? I guess there, do we, do, do we have companies that sell firearm in Jamaica? You guys should be, should know. Seriously, you're not from Jamaica, sir. I don't know. I'm asking. I'm asking legal companies knowing I'm not talking the criminal limp on the road. I mean, legal companies. Seriously, sir, we're, we're professionals here, you know. I'm just asking a question. Why can't you ask, answer the question? And make, I'm making no assumption. Are there companies in Jamaica that sell firearm and um, um, and bullets? Yes. I don't know. I'm genuinely asking the question. And and um, I heard a yes, Fabian. Did you say yes? Yes. Where them there? Where them name? I don't know of any company. I don't know their names. Do you know a name? 
because I don't know of any company that sells firearms and, and, and bullets in Jamaica. I know that people buy because like the ranges and so forth, they would need to buy and persons who have licensed firearm and persons who do hunting and all of that, they would have to buy it from somewhere or from someone. And I'm thinking that that would be an exclusive um, distributor. Is it that the name is public or is it something that is confidential? I genuinely don't know people. I'm not a, I'm not into guns and bullets and stuff. So I don't, I literally know nothing about those things. You're not getting to that. All right. I can't. I, I eventually will get the license for, um, um, but eventually I will. Eventually, but I, I, remember, you need a reason to have a license firearm. You know, the mother asked, "Why? Why didn't that license firearm? Oh, you're a lecturer. I don't know that I have. I, I, I'm going to say I need to protect myself from what." Sir, when Kelly is that the mother money, where you tell him say you want to pay, so you can tell him say you want you get a certain type of income to so need the gun. Oh, that's that's something that I. Thank you for that. You're giving me a reason now. Work I'm not hearing you, Fabian. Something is wrong with your audio. Mic check one. Mic check one. Some, is it that you're having a, an earpiece or something? Because we're hearing some static thing. Oh, it, yeah, I hear it now? Yes, I'm hearing you now. Oh. Um, I forgot what I said a while ago. So, where are guns sold and bullets? I probably need to go and buy. <laughs> Sir, how many I say can tell them that you're a lecturer and you leave work late and in COVID? No, in... not in COVID. Well, we have wait until after yeah, COVID. I see both Jamaica violent. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Property. No, well, property outside. I protect life. Yeah, protect life. All right. So leaving work late and um Okay, leaving work late. Spice it up, you know. Yeah, just yeah. make it. No man, I, I actually I was to look about it, you know. Um, that's before I left Jamaica. Uh, our colleague and I, we were going to apply at the same time. You know, so like a man if you have guns, no the gun. You're right. You're right. There's oh. another side. I'm just professional in my class. There's another side, sir. I'm just very professional in class. A little pocket knife in your pocket, and. If and if they find it you, if 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 it is on on you, then you can be arrested. But if it's in your car, they can't arrest you. <laughs> so how do I walk with a knife? Um, and when the police is going to arrest me, I say that I'm walking with a deadly weapon. Walk with an orange. <laughs> well, <laughs> apparently that's what I need to walk with. But I, once I'm driving, though, I always have a ratchet in my car open. I tell you, when born and growing up, people, me know, me, me, me know what the criminal world in there is just that I choose not to venture in that direction. You know, it's not me. My my family are heavily involved, but I, I choose not world. Anyways, we're sidetracking. All right, so channel design decisions. And again, this is where no, it has to be informed by data and by persons who know what they're doing. So one, you're analyzing the customer needs. So design, designing the marketing channel started finding out what customers want from that channel. Um, setting channel objectives. Objectives should be in terms of targeted levels of customer service, in terms of delivery time and stuff like that. Determining the types and responsibilities of channel members, because remember, it's kind of an ecosystem of different players, of manufacturers, producers, retailers, and wholesalers. And um, everybody has um, different responsibilities. And I'm sure most companies know or most um, brands know that if you, if a customer comes to you about two to three times and you say that you don't have a particular product, once they start shopping somewhere else for that product, it's very difficult to get back that customer. So as a result, you have to ensure that you pro practice proper inventory management. Very, very important. Um, making decisions about international distribution channels, again, very, very important when you're operating in a in a um, international market because it is very complex and different and you have to take into consideration the different the, the, the kind of values and norms and attitudes and customs that exist in those particular countries and the kinds of technologies that exist or the lack thereof right and also to logistics management now and this is where um you want to ensure that you have a very good um 
port. So everyday logistics managers control the movement of physical goods through ports. And this is Port Metro Vancouver, which as the third largest port in North America is home to 27 major marine cargo terminals and three class one railroads. And this is why um, Jamaica, the government, what, what was the thing that they said that we're going to, the logistics hub that they're going to develop in Jamaica and all kinds of excitement and things like that, because it is very important in terms of getting physical goods to wholesalers, retailers, and even customers, because you know that some customers now are able to buy directly from a producer. Many of them are able to buy directly from a producer because the producer or the manufacturer now has an e-commerce website and you can order it directly. All right, and there are times too when you have to order from a, a wholesaler or a retailer online as well. So the whole notion of logistics and supply chain management is a task of coordinating and controlling the flow or the physical flow of all those supplies and products. Um, and that is very, very critical, very, very, very critical. So goods that are going out in terms of outbound distribution and those that are coming in, some that, are, some that need to go back. One whole heap of stuff that is involved in inventory uh, management. This is actually an area I was planning on doing a master's in. But we can't bother too much mathematics is involved. I mean, I like numbers. Marketing logistics and supply chain management. This is actually another area of, of inquiry that you can study in. And they're showing you know in this case, and I think I think Amazon has a, a, a similar model where it says Staples employs a team of super retrievers, robots to move inventory through its distribution centers as efficiently as possible. And when I, and when you come back on Monday, I'm going to show you there is a. I was watching. I don't remember the company, but what they do, they use automated trucks. So there are no physical drivers. And they rely heavily on artificial intelligence and the automated trucks transport goods, physical goods around the factory. It is well coordinated, um, little to no human input. Um, goals of logistic of, of the logistics system deliver a targeted level of customer service at the least cost can be very costly depending on the kinds of transportation systems that are available and I'm, this is why you hear a lot of conversations in the united states about in, um, about infrastructure development beyond just roads and bridges because ports are a part of that kind of infrastructural development to ensure that companies um, can deliver um, customer um, value and you will find that Countries that have very good transportation systems and very good ports are countries that do very well in terms of international trade. All right, so major logistics fun functions, warehousing, inventory management, transportation, logistics, information management, because of course you have to, warehousing, you have to store it somewhere, inventory management, you have to keep a, a toll on what is there, what, what you need to, to get, um, what is, not there and what you know need and so forth. You have to be constant dialogue with your suppliers. Transportation, it has to go all over. Are you using trucks, trains, um, it, land, air, sea? What are you using to transport the goods? Even when it comes into the country by sea, for example, at a port, how does it leave that particular location and what is the time um, does it take to, to leave that particular location? Those things have implications for customer value um, so all of this now is important as a part of the marketing mix, the play in terms of the four P's, we're at the, the place um, in terms of distribution and logistics now plays a very important and fundamental role because there are so many other players that come to the fore or come on the scene that a company, a brand, a, a, a marketer, a distributor, a wholesaler, a manufacturer relies on. These are just giving you different examples. And these are the questions that you can use to review the topic on um, distribution. Please note that your pop quiz is on Monday and it's going to be on the last three modules. What are the last three modules again? This one. 
pricing. What was the one before pricing? I can't remember. Yes. Place, right. So we have, right, so it's place, price. No, 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 that's not correct. Sir, it can be this one. Well, some person's light is out and we have no idea when some person's light. It must be before, sir. It must be before what? Say that again. No, you're saying this one. Remember person, some person's light is out and you know, we have some person have no idea when the light will be back. The light will be back yeah. before Sunday, before Monday. Today is Wednesday. Yeah, today, this is the um, 11th chapter, but you said the one before, so it would be this one included. Of course, you sit down and watch the you sit down and watch the recording. Why do you think you have recordings? That's what you do. You sit down and watch the recording. I hear. So. Yes, you sit down. It's two hours. You sit down one day and and eat one and Devano's ice cream and watch the recording. Oh, I might get Devano's ice cream. Sir, I'm gonna I'm I'm ask you. Yes. <laughs> what go on with Devano's ice cream now? And and what what is what 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 they behind now? What go on? It will help you to, you know, the information to absorb the information. Help so you to absorb. <laughs> I'm actually, I, I, I actually don't eat ice cream a lot because I have acid reflux, so it 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 doesn't agree with my stomach, so I don't eat. I don't really eat dairy products. I hardly ice cream and those things. I don't. So we have product, price, and place. All right, so let's do it only on the first two then because people are saying it's unfair to test persons who are not here on place. So we're gonna do it on price and product then, the first two Ps. On Monday, we will start our discussion on the final P, which is promotion. And that's the final module. Let me just check to see, right? So with the distribution. Yeah, it's the final final thing on the course outline. It's so, so long, but... It's not very difficult. Advertising, sales promotion, public relations, personal selling, direct marketing. Um, all right, I'll start with PR. PR is an advertising. Okay, all right. It's not very easy to do. All right, um, any questions? Sorry, I said the first, first two P, right? Yes. Okay. Any questions, comments, concerns, queries? I guess not. Uh, have a good evening. Is there anybody who wants to stay back to talk about your project? Everybody has permission to leave if you want to stay back to talk about your project. Number 10, pertaining to the quiz next week is um, short answer questions. Always MCQ. Sir? It's always MCQ. You know, we know what MCQ means, right? Multiple choice questions. Oh. Yeah, I, I, so that you can get your results instantaneously. Okay. Yes. All right, anybody intends to stay back to, for us to discuss your, your paper? Sir. Mm-hmm. I don't know if nobody else has to say, but no one has to say something to you. So everybody can go ahead and do it. May I still just come to you? I think so. All right, so permission, you guys have permission to leave. Um, class has officially ended. It's four minutes to nine. I'm staying back for discussion. Read the group project. And one person has requested my staying back. Um, what I can do is to create breakout rooms and talk to persons individually, if you prefer that, if you don't want the person to hear. No, I'm, me and Tosson are in the same group, no, sir. Okay, so all the other persons are still in the, are, are you guys in the same group? Nope. Right, you're not in no, the same sir. group. Different group, no, different Right. So if you, you can, if do you want to speak publicly or you want to talk to me directly, Francine? All right. So I'm going to open the room and I'm going to ask you to go into the room, 
and then I'm going to come into the room and talk to you and then come out the room. And if other persons want me to talk, they just need to invite me to their room and I'll talk, okay? All right. So I've opened the room. So if you want me to talk to you, just go into the room and then I'll come in and talk to you.
All right, so I'm going to join the room with um, that two Francis in. All right, um, is there, let me see, is there anybody else who wants to talk to me? Um, I'm still seeing Diane, Fabian, Estriana, Tosa Saint. I spoke to Tosa Saint and I spoke to, Diane, do you want to talk to me? Mrs. Hanson Gray and Fabian, you want to talk to me? Yeah, yeah, Fabian. I think Fabian, um, hold on, sir, Fabian want to talk. Hold on, let me, Fabian want to talk to you. Okay, you're in the same group? Yes, sir. All right, so I'm going to assign. I'm going to assign it to room two because he's supposed to be in room two. And so, yes, if Fabian, Fabian, if Fabian comes on, and Estriana, so let me put Estriana in room two. Then, all right. Once you guys go into room two, I'll join you. I don't know where's Fabian, but anyhow. Yes, sir. Um, all right, so you're going again. <laughs> 